Hey team, welcome to our Math Olympiad Challenge. Today, we're going to be focusing on the 2021 paper. So get ready to put your mathematical skills to the test as we tackle some challenging and exciting questions. So whether you're a math enthusiast or simply love a good challenge, this series is for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on these brain teasing math adventures. So without further ado, let's jump into problem number one. Find three even numbers less than 400, each of which can be expressed as a sum of consecutive positive odd numbers in at least six different ways. Two expressions are considered to be different if they contain different numbers. The orders of the numbers forming a sum is irrelevant. This question asks us to find an even number, that is a sum of an odd number. So in a simplistic form, this question asks us to find an even number that is a sum of odd numbers. And so we're going to have to find an even number of odd numbers to end up with an even number at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at this with, an, with algebra. So I'm going to start with an arbitrary odd number, and that's going to be seen as 2n plus 1. And then the next odd number, which is 2n plus 3, and then 2n plus 5. And we'll keep on going. And again, I want you to open up your thoughts now because we need to finish up with an even number. And then I'll finish off with 2n plus 4k minus 1. So what I've done here is that I've made sure that I've got 2k numbers, as you can see here. And now I can simplify this a little bit. So I've got 2n appearing every time. So if I take those all out, I'll have 2n times 2k. And what I've got left is 1 plus 3 plus 5, all the way up to 4k minus 1. So you may notice something about the sum of odd numbers. So sum of odd numbers starting at 1 always add up to give square numbers. But if you didn't know that, let's take a look at this diagram here. So we've got the first square number, and then we'll add on the next odd number, and get another square. And if I add on 5, you can see that we get 3 squared. And if I add on 7, I get 4 squared. And this diagram, as you can see, is a little bit of a logical argument, which shows that when we add up odd numbers, starting at 1, we always get a square number. So you need to think carefully as to what square number we actually get. So what we have here is seen as 2n times 2k, and this entire thing here becomes 2k squared. And then we can simplify this as 4nk plus 4k squared. And again, what we can do here is factorize this right away as 4k times n plus k, and we're looking for numbers that are less than 400, as it states here. So let's take a look at what we've done here. Well, we started with the sum of the odd numbers, and we've shown that it equals to 4k n plus k less than 400. And what we need to do, we need to find a total over here that can be written as six different ways, as the sums of all numbers. So if I go ahead and change all the values of k and n, I'd get a different sum of all the odd numbers. So I'm looking for a number here, which is less than 400, that I can write using different values of n and k. So let's just remove the 4, just to make things a little bit simpler here. So again, I'm looking at k with the times n plus k, which is less than 100. And what I want to do is be able to rewrite my numbers as k times n plus k in a lot of different ways. So again, a lot of factors. So what have we discovered here? Well, we've discovered that we're looking for numbers that are less than 100, but that can be written as k times n plus k in six different ways. And if we look at these factors here, we know that n plus k is at least as big as k. So when we multiply these together, then this has to be the smaller of the two. So what we need here is 12 factors, so we can get our six pairs of n plus k. So at this point in the question, you might just think, 
Okay, let's have a think about numbers less than 100 that have lots of factors. And again, it's well known that we have 90 having a lot of factors. And again, this is why it's used as a measure of a right angle, as you can divide it by a lot of things. So let's go for 90 and see how many factors 90 has. So if you write these as prime factors, we've got 2 times 3 squared times 5. And any factor of 90 has to be made up of these primes, which is 2, 3s, and 5. We can either have no 2s or 1, 2. We can have either no 3s or 1, 3, or 2, 3s. Or we could have no 5s or 1, 5. So in terms of factors, we've got two choices here. In terms of the threes, we've got two choices, and the number of five, we have two choices as well. So if we multiply this together, we have 12 factors of 90. And that's good. So that means that we can write 90 in six ways of pairs, and that means that 90 will do as one of our numbers for this expression here. And if you remember, we, multi we divided it by four, so I'm now gonna multiply this by four. So again, that gives us 360. And remember, this question is not asking us to find every single number that works with this criteria. So from now on, we could just do a little bit more guesswork and find out a few of numbers that could work. But what we will do is take a little bit more of a rigorous approach and find all of them. But when you're answering this question, you might just find 90, two more, and show that they work. So we're looking for numbers that are less than 100, that are at least 11 factors here. We've written our numbers as our product of primes. So let's have a think of what possible primes we could think out of these. And let's think about 11. Now, we can already see that 11 is a big prime. And if we're going to stay below 100, we're going to have to multiply this with the smaller prime numbers. So let's think about 11 multiplying by 2 cubed. And that gives us 88. And if we do the same analysis as we did on 90, we can see the number of factors can be 2 times 4. So that's 8 factors. Now, we can't multiply 88 by anything else because it's going to go above 100. So this won't work. But we can then start to think about other numbers that we could pair up with 11. And I'm going to do this very informally. So remember, this is not necessary for this question. You don't have to find all of them. It's just showing you if you did want to find all of them, you'd have to have a rigorous approach. So you could then compare 11 with other primes. And then you'll, you'll soon see that it won't be possible in any way to stay below 100 and get more than 11 factors. So we're going to rule 11 out. But now let's think about the other bigger primes here. Let's take a look at 5 and 7 here. We know that gives us 35. But if I multiply this by another prime, that gives us 70. And I can't multiply that by anything else and still stay below 100. So you can see this has 2 and 2 and 2. So that's 8 factors in total. And I can't multiply it by anything else. So you can use this argument to show that you can't have 5 and 7 at the same time. So our number has to be something that's made up of 2s, 3s, 5s, and 7s, but not 5 and 7s made up at the same time. And if we do a similar analysis to this, we'll soon find that out as well. So what has that done? That's narrowed down our possibilities. So one of the options that we've just found is that we can have the numbers 2 to the alpha times 3 to the beta times 7. And if we try some alphas and betas, we'll soon find out there's only one possibility, and that is 2 squared times 3 times 7, and that is 84, and that has 3 times 2 times 7, and that's 3 factors. And another possibility could be, again, 2 to the alpha times 3 to the beta, and that's times 5. And there's two options here. You could have 2 squared times 3 times 5, and that gives us 60. And that gives us 3 times 2 times 2, and that's 3 factors. Or we could have 2 times 3 squared times 5, which gives us 90. And again, that also has 12 factors. And that's all the possibilities if when we're including 5. So the remaining 
possibilities that we have is the powers of two and three. And so we can have two to the power of five times three, and that gives us 96. And the other option is to have two to the power of three multiplied by three, and that's three squared, which gives us 72. And that has four times three, and that's 12 factors. And that's it. You need to have a little bit more of a careful argument to show that it's all possible. But these are all the possible numbers that are smaller than 100, that have 11 or more factors, and it happens that they all have 12 factors. So if you recall, we divided by 4 at the start, which was here. So to find all the numbers that we had at the start, we now need to go ahead and multiply these numbers by 4. So again, for this section, we have 336. We have 240 for this section, 360, and that's 384. And for the last part, it's 288. So if you recall, the question just asked us to find three. So if you've done that, that's perfect. But now I've gone ahead and I've shown you all the different ways. So with that in mind, that brings us to the end of our video. I hope it was crystal clear in terms of the methods we've taken and the approach. If you found these questions exhilarating, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your fellow math enthusiasts. So keep practicing and you'll soon conquer even more math challenges. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting math content.